His presidency under siege at home and with his own open musing about the prospects of a Nobel Prize, President Donald Trump flew to the other side of the world to meet one of the world's most notorious tyrants on a long-shot peace mission. But his Hail Mary pass didn't work. He needed a win and a distraction given a day-long congressional hearing at home in which his ex-lawyer Michael Cohen painted a devastating picture of the president's character and effectively accused him of crimes on Wednesday. For once, Trump's attempt at counter-programming failed when the summit with Kim Jong-un broke up early with no agreement. It left the North Korea initiative on which Trump has played huge political capital in doubt. It was embarrassing for the president and a big disappointment to anyone who understands how devastating a war on the Korean peninsula would be and would like to see the world's last Cold War confrontation consigned to history. Washington's decision to offer Kim equal billing with the world's most powerful man a priceless propaganda coup in two major summits and Trump's entire impromptu and egocentric negotiating style is now open to question. Criticism that Trump is engineering summits with North Korea as big photo ops that are devoid of substance looks more valid after his Hanoi trip. And his art of the deal diplomacy has come up empty-handed again. The president's repeated insistence going in, for instance, that he was in no rush to get a deal may have undercut his own negotiating strategy. Trump tried to play down the collapse of the summit, saying that Kim had agreed to maintain his halt to missile and nuclear tests. This wasn't a walk away like you get up and walk out, Trump told reporters of the end of the summit. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo revealed that the U.S. had wanted the North Koreans to do more to show it was sincere and giving up its nuclear weapons program and that Kim had refused. A case can be made that the U.S. was playing hardball in ending the meeting when it didn't get what it wanted and refusing to lift sanctions before there is significant denuclearization. The summit's failure does not spell immediate disaster. Negotiating with a regime as isolated and intractable as the one in Pyongyang was always going to be tortuous. No president before Trump has managed to end its nuclear threat and prolonging the status quo as the current commander-in-chief did is a far better scenario than a slide towards war, which was one possibility when Trump was threatening to rain fire and fury on North Korea.